Welcome to the Daily Race. Hey, we're starting a brand new study here today. We're going to be studying the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. It's in the New Testament. Uh, it is a relative, like, kind of medium-sized book of the Bible. And whenever we start a new study, we want to do a little bit of an introduction. I'll, I'll do a more in-depth one, uh, shoot it later this week. Uh, but kind of big picture here. This is a, a letter, but it's, it's, it's a different type of letter. We have different types of genre in, in the New Testament. We have the gospel accounts, which Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, these are firsthand accounts of, of, the, of the life of, of Christ um, from a specific perspective. Uh, the point is to show that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is God in the flesh, the, the gospel good news story of Jesus and the resurrection. Then we have the book of Acts, which is a... Um, uh, a historical book. It's really Luke part two. <laughs> the author Luke uh, wrote Acts as well too, a partner of Paul from his perspective, the, the history of the early church, first couple decades there. Um, and then we have Hebrews, which is part of the, the letters of, of the New Testament. But, but this is a different type of letter. It's We just finished reading Timothy, which is a very personal letter. It was a very you know directed to Timothy about some specific issues at a specific place at a specific time. But there was enough information in here, enough, uh, as Paul was writing to Timothy, that it was applicable to uh, the church at large. So it was circulated. Hebrews is a letter that isn't written to a specific person. It's not that narrow of a letter. And, and honestly, it's, it's, has, it's missing some of the structures of the letter. In fact, as we read the first few sentences here, um, it's not like the, these personal and pastoral letters. It starts like this. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. That, that's not a, a normal letter opening. Now, it ends kind of like a letter, so we know that this was, was written, you know, was written to a group of people, um, but it's really more like a sermon. And in fact, that's a great way to think of the book of Hebrews as uh, a first century, probably written before 70 AD, um, and it was a, a sermon that was recorded, that was written down, that was circulated, whether this was ever preached live, we're not quite sure, uh, whether it was one of, uh, you know, a great sermon and then they copied it down and they passed along, or it was just written in that form to be to be passed along to teach theology. Now, why was it written? It was written uh, as a, a doctrine, as an argument, a, a logical argument about Jesus. It's addressed to, well, the book is Hebrews, to the Hebrews, the Jewish people, um, who either are converting to Christianity, uh, Jews who have converted to Christianity, uh, pagans that have converted to Christianity and then adopted Jewish beliefs, um, all of this to kind of sort it out. And the point is, if you take like think about Hebrews, Jesus is greater than everything. Jesus is greater than everything. We're going to go through several different arguments. Jesus is greater than this, than this, than this, than this. Therefore, Jesus is, uh, Jesus is it. So uh, that's the big picture of, of Hebrews here. Uh, let's, let's read here um, as it starts off, just, just a little application here today. Um, today, it's going to be talking about Jesus is greater than angels. Jesus is greater than angels. All right, like I, I just mentioned that first verse there, long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God, God promised everything to the son as an inheritance and through the Son, he created the universe. So just like John starts off his gospel accounts and takes Jesus all the way back to the very beginning. Uh, he was an ag the agent of creation. The author here of Hebrews is doing the same thing, reminding us that, that Jesus, God in the flesh, uh, was an agent of creation. He created the universe. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he has cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God, of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. All right, so, so first of all, why do we even need this argument that Jesus is greater than the angels? Like, isn't that obvious, right? Well, one of the issues that the early church leaders were, were dealing with were people that were uh, struggling with Jesus not being God. Uh, that, that Jesus was just a really, really good man. That he was Messiah or someone that, that God indwelled for, like a prophet. And in the kind of old, like, theology of the past, you have, you have God in heaven. Obviously, God is in control. There is only one God. 
And then you have all of the his created beings, all, all the angels, all of the the we'll just kind of we'll just use that term angels to kind of categorize all of the different spiritual beings that, that God has created, uh, that serve Him, that, that worship Him, that are His messengers. And, and then you have people. And there are some people that, that are elevated that, that God uses as prophets, that he speaks through them. I'm not saying elevated in the sense of um, better than, but when we think about spiritual you know, weight, that's kind of how it goes. So you got, you got God, you got angels, and you got prophets, you've got people. Jesus was not just a normal person. He was not just a prophet. He was God in the flesh. And that's what he's starting off his argument. There's going to be many other arguments here, but he's starting this very basic one, that Jesus was not an angel. He was greater than angels. So what's the proof? What's the proof? So he gives a couple arguments here, and we're going to finish it up tomorrow. It says, For God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. You are my son. Today I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And when he brought his he, when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let all of God's angels worship him. So here's what the author's doing. It's, it's providing a logical argument for why Jesus is greater than the angels. Once again, is the whole point of, of Hebrews that Jesus is greater than angels? No, it's that Jesus is greater than everything. But this is a sermon. This is a, a logical argument. It's starting off with, with one place. If it's He's greater than this, angels, that we're going to hear about. He's greater than this, and this, and this, and this. Therefore, Jesus is, is God in the flesh. He's greater than all of creation. So, just kind of a quick introduction there and just where it's starting off tomorrow. We'll, we'll continue this in, in chapter 2. Uh, but just want to lay the foundation here a little bit. Wanted to uh, show what's one of the early issues here going on with the church, uh, with with believers that Jesus really is God in the flesh, not just a prophet, not just a really good human, not just an angelic being. (laughs) He is something greater than that. All right, but we're going to continue on tomorrow. Like I said, tomorrow for now, let's go and pause. Let's pray here and get our day started. Lord, we love you. And we thank you so much just that, that you are greater than anything we can imagine. Yeah, when we Think about what you did for us, coming down here to earth, humbling yourself, taking the position of, of a servant. God, we, uh, we're just in awe by that. So as we start today, God, we, we do so re- <coughs> remembering your grace for us, remembering your sacrifice for us. All of these things you willingly took on your behalf. And we just step into the day with gratitude that if nothing Nothing else happens to us today that is good. You've already been more than gracious to us. You've given us far more than we ever ask or imagine or think. So we just thank you for that today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.